Hi everyone, my name is Ashish Kumar and I'm working as a backend developer in the industry for three years. And in this video, we're going to see a very interesting array problem that is lead code 448, find all number disappeared in an array. Now, array is a very common topic and if you go for the interview of the topmost product based companies, then you can definitely expect an array based question. So now let's see this question. Let's see how we can solve it in the most optimized approach and what it's asking us to do. Okay. So the question says, given an array nums of n integer where nums of i is in the range 1 to n, return an array of all the integers in the range 1 to n that do not appear in nums. Okay. So we're given an array nums of size n and basically this is what it's asking us to do. Let me explain. So for example, if n is equal to 5, that means that we're given an array of size 5 and all the elements in the array will be in the range 1 to 5. Okay. This is the range in which the elements of the array will be. So let's take an array for example, 1, 2, 2, 4, 5. Okay. So this is the array n is 5. And you can see all the elements are in the range 1 to 5. But you can see one thing, 3 is missing from the array, right? From 1 to 5, 3 is missing. So we have to return 3. Likewise, in any array of size n, all the numbers from 1 to n, whichever is missing, we have to put it in a list and we have to return it, okay? Now, this problem becomes a very easy problem if you're allowed to use something like a hash set or a hash map or a frequency array. But let's see what the ask here is. And the ask here is that we have to do it without extra space and in of one run time. So without extra space, what does it mean? It basically means that we have to, we cannot use any other extra space. We have to make do, we, we can only use a list of integer which we are returning and we have to make do with the nums array that we're given. So we cannot use any other thing. We cannot use a hash set, hash map or any other frequency array. So this array that we're given, right, we just have to do with this. We cannot use anything else. Okay. So this is where the trick comes. This is where you have to use a little bit of brain and you have to see how we can do without using extra space. So now let's see with an example. We can take this example itself, this test case that it's given. Example 1, 4327823. Let's see with this example how we can do it. So 4327823. Let me write it down. So this is 4327823. Two, one. Okay. So this is the array. As you can see, n here is 8. All the elements are between 1 to 8 and few elements are missing. We have to tell which elements are missing. Okay. Now, like I already mentioned, no extra space. So we just have to use this array, whatever is given to us. So how do we find the solution by just using the array that is given to us? That is the main thing. Okay. Let me make these into individual boxes so that it's easier for us to understand. Now, as you know, every array has indexing, right? Every array has indexing. Here the size is 8, so indexing will be 0 to n minus 1, 0 to 7. So it will be something like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Correct? This is the indexing of the array that we are given. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this array's indexing to keep track of all the elements that are present. And then we'll get to know what elements are missing. So from the indexing itself, we'll keep track of which elements are there. So every index will represent an element. 0 will represent 1, 1 will represent 2, 2 will represent 3 so on and so forth, 7 will represent 8. So you have 0 to n minus 1 indexing. Each index will represent an element and using the indexing, we'll keep track of whether the element is there or not, okay? So how are we going to do that? Let's see. Let me remove all this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to traverse through the array, okay? So I'm going to traverse through the array, one by one, see all the elements. I come across four. So I come across 4, meaning 4 is in the array. So I have to mark that 4 is in the array. So I'll go to the corresponding index of 4. What is the corresponding index of 4? It is 3. I go to 3, I mark it as negative. So this index 3 is corresponding to 4 and I mark it as negative because I need some way to mark it. So I'm just making it as negative so far. Okay, now I'm traversing, I come across 3. What is the index of 3? It is 2. So I mark the element at 2 as negative. Now I come across 2. So I'm taking the absolute. So the element is 2 now. What is the index of 2? It is 1. I come across, I go to the element at index 1, I make it as negative. Now, I come across 7, the absolute value. Now, 7's index is 6. I go to the element at 6, I mark it. I make it negative. Then I come across 8, meaning 8 is present. So I go to the index of 8, which is 7, and I mark it as negative. Okay. Now, I come across 3. 3's index is 2. It's already marked, leave it be. Now, then I come across 2. 2's index is 1, already marked, leave it be. I come across 1. 1's index is 0, I go to the element as 0 and I mark it. And I'm done with all the elements. So what I did, whichever element I found, I went to the index of that and I marked it by making it as negative. If it was already negative, I let it be. Okay. 
Now you can see that the index 4 and 5, these were not marked because the elements at index 4 and 5 are still positive. So what does it mean? 4 was corresponding to 5, 5 was corresponding to 6, right? Because if the index was i, then the element corresponding to it was i plus 1. So index 4 corresponding to 5, index 5 corresponding to 6, you can see that these are the elements that are missing. You can see we have everything 1, 2, 3, 4, but we don't have 5, 6, then we have 7 and 8. So whatever elements were not there, their corresponding index is still positive, meaning they are not marked. So this is how we're going to do it. We're just going to use the index itself to see, to first mark which elements are there and whichever was not marked, then that means that that element is missing. Okay. So very simple. Now let's see how we can do the same thing on code. Okay. And then let's try to submit the code. Okay. So I have the code right here for you guys. Let me first remove all of this so that it's better for us to understand. Okay. So, okay, so I have the code right here for you guys. Let's see how we're doing the same thing in the code level. Okay, let's take this. Now, first thing I'm doing is I'm creating the list of integers. This is where the answer will be stored. This is basically the answer. We'll be storing the missing elements in this list and then later we'll be returning it. Now, this is where I'm doing the traversal. This is where the traversal is happening. One by one, whatever element I'm getting, I'm going to the index of that and I'm marking it. So this is where I'm getting the index. And like I said, we have to do absolute because it's possible that the number has been marked, but we want the absolute. So we're doing the absolute minus one going to the index, then we'll be marking that index. Before marking, we're checking whether it's already negative. If it's already negative, we don't need to mark. But if it's not negative, then we need to make it negative, meaning marking. So this is where we're marking it basically or making it negative, so to speak. Okay. Now, once after that is done, then what we are doing is now we're checking for the missing elements. Okay. How are we checking that? Let's see. So like I said, we have to look for the elements that are now positive because those are the index for which elements are missing. Okay. So I'm going to the array. I'm checking if the number is positive and if it's positive, then I'm doing element missing is equal to I plus one. Why? Because like I said, if the index is I, then the element is I plus one. So whichever is positive, whichever is positive, the element missing is i plus 1. So here we get our missing elements. And like I said, as soon as we get our missing elements, we'll be adding them to the list. And then finally, we're returning the list. So pretty simple, nothing complex. What we did, we used the indexing to keep track of which elements were present. And we marked them as negative. Later on, we checked whichever were positive. We went to the index. And from the index, we retrieved the missing element. We stored it in the list. And then we returned it. So that's all pretty easy. No extra space was used. Now let's run it. So okay, and now let's run it. So you can see that it's getting accepted in the test cases. We can submit it. And you can see that it gets submitted with 6ms. If you do a little bit of changes, you can get it to 0ms. So that's pretty much it. We just used the same array. We didn't use any other extra space. So that's pretty much it. Hope you understood. Thank you.